Hello boys and girls, what's going on? It's Tom. And it's Jamie. Welcome to the Chronicles of Podcast. The Chronicles of Bloodstock 2023. Hey guys, uh, I'm Dan from Sky Stone Black. And I'm Xander from Sky Stone Black. Just pretend that we won't die alone in sweet, sweet solitude. It's an absolute pleasure to have you both here. Thank you so much for taking the time yeah, to sit and chat to us. Well, stand and chat to us, should I say. Uh, most importantly, how are you guys doing? Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like I've been at a festival all weekend. Yeah? That's what I feel like. It feels like the Sunday of a festival. I feel grim. Well, oh. and I was going to say, what does a Sunday feel like at a festival? Sun- yeah. Sunday feels grim. There's a lingering hangover that's kind of just sitting there. Okay. And it's, and it's not, it doesn't feel like it's going to go away anytime soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so that's that's the general general feel of today. Um, we're, we're we're trying to stay on things like water up until the set, and then afterwards we're hoping to top up that hangover. Yeah, no. <laughs> to be fair, well, you've got to go out in style, haven't you? At the end of the day, let's be really honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you've said you've been here since Thursday, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah. How has your bloodstock been? It's been really nice. To be fair, everyone's been really sweet. Um, there's been just. Compared to the festivals that I've been at, a much sort of like more positive sense of community, to be fair. Yeah. And that's been really, really nice. It's like, I'm really big on sort of like going to sort of like download, slam dunk, things like that every year. This feels almost a little bit more homely. Yeah, it's, it's, agreed. It's, it's like, it's like you, you, you go to download and it's just kind of, it's kind of like you get some really nice, like fucking nice gourmet meal <laughs> kind of thing. And then you come here and it's like mother's own. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like you've gone home for tea. That's what it's like. That's the and, best dungeon I've ever heard. And it's, it's just so nice, so homely. <laughs> and, and everyone's just really happy. And, and this isn't like what it's like at other festivals. Like, everyone's genuinely really, like, happy to be here. Yeah. Oh, 100%, man. It's a massive family feel. Just yeah. going back to that gourmet thing very quickly. <laughs> like, how shit is gourmet food? It comes out that little square, doesn't it? And it's like... That's thirty. Yeah, that's thirty-five quid. That and it's got a little bit of jus on the side. <laughs> I think you've been having the wrong gourmet food. If I'm honest, mate. Have I? Oh, I've been lying to you, I'm like bastard. I, I I think you need you need to go to Prashad's in in uh, in Bradford and have and have a bit of their taster menu. Oh, <laughs> oh, fuck me, honestly. Absolute champion, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so my dad's from Sheffield, so it's all good. I'm allowed to say that. If I were, if I were from outside of Yorkshire, you could have punched me in the face. So it's all good. <laughs> um, are you excited for your set later? Yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah, it's going to be really sweet. We've we've been watching a few of the other bands that are on the Jaeger stage, and the the, the pool's been really nice. So uh, I mean, we've we've had a few people sort of like talking about us and things like that, and the, and the fact that we're which is really nice. Um, in terms of like comparisons of other music that's here there isn't quite a lot of um, of power metal representing you saw an absolute crack of a band yesterday oh, in terms of power metal yeah. we saw uh, D- Dachesis yeah. um, Dachesis yeah. they were great and actually it gives us like a lot of hope because they were saying that they started on the Jaeger stage and then the next year they played New Blood mm. and then after that they're on Sophie stage now yeah. and obviously we're starting this year on the Jaeger stage yeah. so it gives us like you know something to look forward to as soon as you mentioned the Birmingham band he goes nuts so <laughs> you know yeah um, you know they are great they are absolutely incredible big shout out to Kesis um, yeah so with a Bloodstock set com- sorry not a, blo- a festival set compared to a normal gig yeah. do you change things up a bit because it's like you know they've come everyone's not normally going to be aware of you shall we yeah. say so it's like is it going to be just all the bang- put all the bangers in or are you going to throw a few curveballs it is, it is kind of all the bangers what we've kind of tried to do is is trying to take our normal set and just kind of like polish is, is, okay. is, is, is the easiest way to kind of say it we've we've taken um, a lot of what the normal set is and then got more of the, um, I say more of a couple more of the newer tunes um, the, and even one that isn't even released yet um, just to kind of, um, we want we want to sell our sound. We want to sell what we yeah. sound like and that yeah. kind of thing. So yeah. it's like if you listen to like the No Place Like Home album, you're going to get a really good gist about what we sound like. And we're going to play a, like half of the set is, is is from is from the album. And then with the new stuff and especially like having you and using more electronics and things like that, um, it just I think it just better represents us really. So um, yeah, we've tried, kind of gone for all bangers. There was. A little bit of a cover debate, which was fun. 
because but 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 I know you, you well and it's not that you don't like doing it you just think that we could have we can play his own music and you think our music's better that's yeah, think. yeah. I think but, I think if we're at if we're at a festival, we should be playing our music and not yeah. anyone else's. You know, that's I, kind of fair. I, I really wanted to come to Bloodstock and do our cover of Take on Me, because oh. it slaps. <laughs> it's really cool, and and we just think you know get a load of metalheads, a lot of big like Viking beards and stuff like that, and then just like going nuts to a ha. I'm really into that. To be fair, I, I'm seeing cool. a bunch of bearded metally men go da 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 yeah that's what I mean that's what I mean so there, there was a little bit of a debate with that but ultimately we have just gone for what are the bangers that's going to sell us the best we've kind of not gone for some of the the proggier kind of stuff like so it, like we've kind of tried to avoid some of the longer songs with the big instrumental sections um, and that kind of thing just because that kind of stuff works really well on a bigger stage yeah when we're on Jaeger stage, we want it to be quite quite impactful. Yeah, so makes sense. De- definitely big riffs, big choruses, um, something that's that's going to make make the heads nod. Kind of a thing. bit of theatre as well. We've got some quite theatrical interludes between Ooh. our songs. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So it's, we've, we've, yeah, we, we we kind of have. I mean, I mean, we, we've been said we've been told like no pyros and stuff like that. So <laughs> we've had to do it in other ways, unfortunately. So. Yeah. Oh, amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. So, us as a podcast, we're ambassadors for the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. Mm-hmm. Are you guys familiar with Sophie and her story? Yes. So, just playing at Bloodstock, a, a festival that has like a, a big family feel, like Sophie's very important to this festival. Yeah. Foundation here every year. You've got the stage named after and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Does it make playing here that extra little bit more special? Like you're flying the flag for Sophie and her story being here? It's. It is just kind of the story of inclusivity um, in terms of the, that we're feeling. And I think that the whole um, sort of like like the brand of, of Sophie and how it's um, travelled and how it's got bigger um, has gone to represent probably more than what it did originally in terms of yeah. branching over into... Um, I mean, that inclusivity of sort of like people um, from sort of like, like LGBT backgrounds and things like that. It's just so great to come here and it's like anyone can come here and there's such a, a misconception because everyone's wearing black and everyone's got big beards and stuff like that but everyone's just so happy yeah. and, it's, yeah. and, it's, and it's great and it's it, and that's the kind of thing that I think that Sophie really represents that, that, that us as a community um, is, is just so strong and it's so welcoming and, and that's what I really like about it absolutely it's amazing but Friday just gone was 16 years since Sophie's attack. Mm-hmm. So I'm just wondering, growing up in this community, being part of this metal community, yeah. is this something you ever had to go through when you were growing up, being treated differently because of the music you listened to, the way you dressed, oh. whatever it may have been, on just being treated differently yeah. because you're a metalhead? Yeah. Well, uh, when I was younger, I still had this long hair, you know, I was still dressed in black. Um, it's something I really struggled with. Like, I grew up in a tiny little pit village in the northeast of England, and it just wasn't really what they were used to seeing. You know, like really lots of toxic masculinity, lots of homophobia, and stuff like that. Um, so, from literally like five year old, I had school teachers telling me to cut my hair and saying that I look ridiculous. And I'm like, you're telling you're telling a little child to cut your hair. Do you know what I mean? Like, how how ridiculous what? is that? And like, obviously that's that's quite a small thing but it's it's kind of echoes throughout like my life in kind of that kind of environment um, so it's it's a really important thing for me I've never in my life had short hair uh, as kind of like a middle finger to those people who've kind of like again it's such a tiny little rebellion but I, I love it it's your choice it's your fucking hair. exactly exactly so do, do whatever you want with it Catholic school upbringing, man. That's oh, just right. like, you know, <laughs> oh, okay. That says everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, what we're trying to find out from people as well is just to get some ideas as well, because I don't know if you've noticed while you've been here, there's a lot of kids here. There's, yeah. there's babies here. Yeah, it's, like, it's such a great family festival. So, <laughs> when these kids grow up, and they become our age when we were walking around in our baggy t-shirts and our hoodies and chains off our jeans. When they're our age now, coming to festivals, when they're older and they're like you guys and they're playing on the goddamn stages themselves. What do you think services we could provide them to sort of help them get through it if they're being treated differently? 
Oh, it's just out. speaking out about stuff, you know. It's, I think I think being proactive in, you know, if you see behavior or like hear stuff that you're not happy with, like calling it out. Is it, there's like an attitude just generally, not in this festival specifically, but I do think that as times have moved on and from what I've seen as sort of like being a teacher for like seven, eight years and things like that and what I've seen of sort of like, it's, 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 it's like you teach a class and you can clock where like your, your emo kids are and it's like, you love my chem, don't you? Uh, and, and, and stuff like that and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, oh, you watch a lot of anime, you don't you? are like, yeah, yeah. And there's, it's way more inclusive compared to like when I was at school and things like that. There's a lot more people who... Uh, <clears throat> open to listening to other other types of music when you've got what I would sort of like kind of like label as sort of like your, your emo kid your mosher kid and then you've got your maybe more mainstream chavier kid and both of them are having a conversation about Slipknot <laughs> and and those are the things that I've seen that I've been really pleasantly surprised by and and I mean it's bad for me to label um, a, a kid and put into a box well you're an emo kid you're, you're a mainstream chavier kid and things like that but that's that's more from sort of like my upbringing that is happening less and less, and I think that's meant. It is, and, and it's something that I'm doing less and less. That was that's from a very early teaching, <laughs> teaching perspective. Yeah. Is that <laughs> we're we're both music teachers, so yeah. we we do make an effort of trying to like talk about different genres of music in our classes and like that's, that is uh, incredible. you know and like showing yeah. each other everything from Ed Sheeran to Slipknot and you know I, I'm I'm a big folk. I'm not showing anyone a tune. <laughs> Not even the bring me song. Oh, I have shown that. Actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have shown that. Yeah. I can't believe you lied to me. I'm, I'm so, so, so sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm heartbroken right now. <laughs> uh, but bringing it back to you guys, you released your brand new single, "Sweet Sweet Solitude," two days ago. Yeah, we did. Yeah. How has it been received so far? I know it's only been two days, but. I'll We're in a field, man. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when we get a signal. Good point, right? We had no signal to know. <laughs> You go to play it and like, boo! Yeah. <laughs> My sister sent me a really nice message saying it was really good. Uh, as I, it's her new, uh, like, she calls it earworm. It's stuck in yeah. her head. Uh, okay. Uh, which, like you know, yeah, really yeah. nice. That's, feedback, that's, that's the only feedback yeah. I've had. Was it Toby? It was, yeah, it was Toby. Yeah. Toby's great. <laughs> <laughs> Does this... <laughs> Does this mean that a, uh, a follow-up album is coming to No Place Like Home? I, th- I think I think so. Yeah. Are we are we allowed yeah. to discuss that or is yeah. that? Yeah, if you want to discuss yeah, it. Yeah. Why, why not? Yeah. Um, at the moment, it's just like we, we, it's collating tunes and things like that. Okay. Um, we 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 wanted to have something kind of dead on, um, and and be able to give a date and things like that. But unfortunately, we, we're just on a ballpark at the moment. Um, with, with how releasing music is is like in the modern day, it's like, like to be fair. Jamie just wants to release it and as soon as he's got the final mix just go put it out but it's now it works we need to have way more of a plan way more of a build up way more of um, sort of like booking shows and, and to support that at the moment we're booking for November, December and then for okay. when the album's going to be out um, we'll be looking to tour that in February nice. That's, nice that's the plan with it we we have we are wanting to keep ourselves a little bit busy in terms of releases um, and be releasing more music that's either either going to be on the album or it's just going to be singles to be fair um, it's, it's been interesting with things that we've been writing recently where there's been discussions of we love the tune but does it fit in this collective of songs kind of thing yes and especially with other bands that we've seen do that um, like Holding Absence did it with Gravity just releasing it as a single Don Broco do it a lot um, where they'll release just tunes like um fingernails half man half god um and just just pumping out singles with videos that are sick so we, like, we've, we've got a little bit of that going on that's then going to build up and then i think out of the songs that we are sort of like recording at the moment and filming music videos for at the moment um most of them will be on the album okay most okay yeah. heard that here first guys all right uh, guys, thank you so much for your time. Cheers, it's greatly appreciated. So and uh, I hope you absolutely fucking smash it later. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Thank you so Cheers, much, man. Take care, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>